Hello everybody, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I wanted to try to just experiment and see if I can get a snowy effect, like where I have a tree and it has snow on the limbs. Uh, I'm going to try this without masking fluid. Uh, my idea is to essentially just paint around the white. I guess I'll, um, I'll talk about it as I go through it and try to formulate my plan. So first, I just want kind of a dark, watery mix, and I'm thinking I'm going to put in the tree trunk and the branches first. But I'm going to emit spaces for where water can sit on it. So, let's say our trunk is here, and I'm going to feed colors into this. I'm going to leave places white for it to sit for snow and not paint the entire width to give the idea of a space of snow alongside like right in here maybe the snow is sitting on it that's my idea so far and we'll put some crazy branches in and just kind of have fun A secondary tree. Make it thin. Let it sit on it. I want to maintain the kind of wetness so I could feed in different colors and get a variety in it. For example, I'll feed in some burnt umber right there and there. And that's just to keep it with a variety and interest. I may switch over to the um, rigger at some point. Get more. We'll bring blue and burnt umber. Let them just trail around. I'm going to put another set of trees. Okay. Let's uh, grab some burnt uh, raw sienna just to feed in a variety. You let that white stay as if it was snow. Let's grab the number one rigger. Try to vary the concentration of pigment so that we can get sense of depth here. These guys come off the top of the page. Okay, now I'm thinking I'll kind of put in shadows. We'll put it so that the light comes from 
the right. I'm not really too concerned about shadows. We'll have it come from that direction. It's casting it. We kind of got that snow drift. Just kind of dry brush effect over this land, leaving the white for snow. I could probably feed in a little bit of ultramarine into some of these for a little bit of variety. Paint's gray just because I grabbed a little bit to just darken the shadows here. Now I didn't put any like background in, so here's my idea. I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to mop in a background while omitting spaces along the branches to hopefully get the illusion of snow. So let me pause this. Okay, so I did a quick dry off. In hindsight, I kind of wish that I did a um, more, more a background beforehand, but I'll come back and I'll try that out on another experiment. But let me kind of paint in the sky now. Grab a little bit of lemon yellow. Kind of the sky in the background. And I'll leave areas that are white. So I'm going to touch on this side close, but then I'm going to leave spaces where the snow would sit. may have to darken my background color to get a better illusion, but hopefully the idea that's in my mind is making sense. And this is kind of sans, you know, without masking fluid. Let me get, um, this makes raw sienna. Touch and I'll give it gaps. Let it touch here on the other side. I'll have it open for snow. Open for snow. Open for snow. So touch up against the bottom here. Okay, so I'm kind of just going around, touching the bottom side, leaving sides open for snow to sit on. Okay, so my paper's pretty saturated because I kind of went all over with that. Does seem like it has the potential to be the illusion of snow, but not having a background is really throwing me off. So I'm gonna go in and grab light red oxide and ultramarine. Put in a dark background.
So I don't know if this is a common approach to snow or not. I guess that was just uh, something that I wanted to try, leaving that gaps for it. Try to bury the background. And I could feed some colors into this for a variety. Let's grab some burnt sienna. Ultramarine back in here. Illusion of trunks. Now what I'm going to try to do is take my rigger. I'm wetting it just so it's like straight. Now that's the uh, sword brush. I get the, the rigger. I'm wetting it just so it's straight drying it off and then I'm pulling up in the back and these pull up lines I may need to go to the number four to pull up more and this is to kind of give the illusion of the white trunks in the background see this is the number four right here yes it is this is the pull up paint back here. Could probably even just take the paper towel, roll it to a point, pull up in that fashion. And we may even be dry enough in the back to try to scrape. another quick dry off then just to push the experiment a little bit further I'm gonna mix it dark with my number four rigger and I'll have some kind of closer foliage and see just trying to get a nice dark mix add a little depth to the scene, since this is coming from the front. We could probably even use gouache, but I think I want to save gouache for another experiment. And that's just to give a little bit of depth. And we'll dry it and put a mat on it. Okay, so here it is with the mat over it. I'm gonna sign it real quick. Um, once again, please like, subscribe, follow. If you have any questions, comments, let me know down below. Um, and if you'd like to support this channel, I have a link to the Patreon account. Uh, you're always welcome to follow along with any tutorial. You're always welcome to sign your own name to it. And you have my express permission to sell anything you paint after following one of these tutorials. Um, Cause I want you guys to be successful and have cash money for art supplies. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to y'all soon.